Good morning, St. James family and friends. These are our announcements for the upcoming weeks. We are in the season of Lent, and we are continuing our Abide Lenten series on Michael Iaconelli's book, Messy Spirituality, during our midweek meetup. Join us on Wednesdays at 6.30 p.m. Central Standard Time. You can also go to our website and download our Abide Lenten Guide to use during this season of Lent. All women are invited to our upcoming Women's Retreat, March 20th and 21st. On Saturday, March 20th at 12 noon Central Standard Time, we will have our Abide Women's Retreat. This life-changing virtual event will invite women to deepen their relationship with God through focusing on prayer and purpose. You can go to our website and register for this powerful retreat. On Sunday, March 21st, we will celebrate women with a special Women's Day worship service at 10.30 a.m. Our preacher is the Reverend Dr. Myra Billups from North Stelton AME Church in New Jersey. If you are a new member of St. James AME Church, our next new members class will take place on Saturday, April 10th at 11 o'clock a.m. Central Standard Time. If you have not attended a new members class yet at St. James, then this class is for you. You can register for the next class on our website. Remember to go to our website at stjamesamechicago.com to sign up for our email list to receive upcoming updates on future ministry events. We are rejoicing and we are glad in the old taste and see that the Lord is good. Welcome to this morning's worship experience. We are so excited that you have decided to spend your Sunday with us. We're going to ask you to like and to share this worship experience. Invite your friends, invite your family, invite your neighbors to come and help us lift up Jesus the Christ, our King. Welcome to this space. Oh, 
1 tells us, Blessed are they that delight in the law of the Lord. They shall bring forth fruit in due season, and whatever they do, they shall prosper. Let us pray. Father God, we humbly bow before your throne of grace on this morning, Lord God, and we just acknowledge that you are God, that you are almighty, that you are everlasting and eternal, God that you are the Alpha and the Omega, God. You are God alone, alone. You are God, Father. We come now and we just give thanks for your grace and your mercy, Lord. We give thanks for your presence and for your Holy Spirit and for your comforting us in our time of need right now, Jesus. We give thanks, Lord, because you have brought us into this virtual space, healthy and whole, Lord God. You have brought us into this virtual space with air in our lungs and thoughts in our mind, God. We give honor and praise to you because you sent your son, Jesus Christ, that we may have liberation and that we may have freedom as a people, Lord God. And so for that, we give honor and glory and we praise Jesus' holy name. Father God, right now we lift up prayer for you, for the Texans and all the people of Texas who are struggling right now, Lord God. We lift up prayer 
for everybody in the community, Lord God, who is struggling to feel connected to others in this time, Lord God. We especially lift up prayer for our children, Father God, because the children are the future and right now, some of them are struggling because they have no way to connect to school and connect socially. And we know that they need these social things, Lord God. So we, we give honor and praise because we know that these things are done by faith and we give glory to your name. In Jesus Christ's name, we say all these things done by faith. Hallelujah and amen. I am so excited to introduce our preacher today, the Reverend Tabitha P. Sonko. She is a sister, she is a friend, she is a powerhouse preacher, she is a dynamic leader who leads with compassion and love. Her ministry of empowerment allows for people to reach their own success, and I've seen that in everything she has put her hands to as she gave leadership in a pastoral residency at Charles Street African Methodist Episcopal Church in Boston, where we met for the first time as pastoral residents in that program, in her pastoral charges in Pennsylvania, and currently where she is pastoring a monumental AME Church in Stilton, Pennsylvania. That dynamic leadership continues to bring that church to higher heights. She has come this morning to preach, and I am so grateful that she accepted the invitation to share with our congregation. I have said it already, but she is truly one of my sisters. She is a sister. She is a friend. Y'all say amen to her in the chat while she's preaching. She is a wonderful human being, and I'm glad to know her. She is the Reverend Tabitha Patricia Sonko, and she has come to preach. Pray for her as she delivers the word of God. Let his heart. 
I am grateful to God to be with you here, St. James African Methodist Episcopal Church on this second Sunday in March during this Women's Emphasis Month. I am grateful to be asked and to be given the opportunity to stand behind this sacred desk in the virtual space to share a word with you. I'm grateful to God for my brother and friend in ministry, the Reverend Craig Robinson Jr., who is your pastor and my dear friend as well, to the Reverend Dr. Shakira Sanchez Collins, assistant pastor at St. James Amy Church. I'm grateful to her for her friendship um, and how much she continues to do and change and augment the worship, the service of this couple, but even more to serve the Chicago, the, how they serve the Chicago community together and how she serves not only in ministry, but in the ministry of healing as a doctor in the medical system in Chicago. So God, God bless you, Reverend Dr. Shakira, to all of the associate clergy, leaders, laypersons, Lottie Dottie and everybody. I can't call the entire role, but I am grateful to God to be with you on today. There is a word from the Lord coming from the Gospel of Mark, the fifth chapter, verses 25 through 34. Again, the Gospel of Mark, the fifth chapter, verses 25 through 34. Won't you go with me as we break the bread of life together? Reading from the New Revised Standard Version, it says this. Now there was a woman who had been suffering from hemorrhages for 12 years. She had endured much under many physicians and had spent all that she had. And she was no better, but rather grew worse. She had heard about Jesus and came up behind him in the crowd and touched his cloak. For she said, if I but touch his clothes, I will be made well. Immediately her hemorrhage stopped and she felt in her body that she was healed of her disease. Immediately aware that power had gone forth from him, Jesus turned about in the crowd and said, who touched my clothes? And his disciples said to him, you see the crowd pressing in on you? How can you say who touched me? He looked all around to see who had done it, but the woman, knowing what had happened to her, came in fear and trembling, fell down before him and told him the whole truth. He said to her daughter, your faith has made you whole. Well, it's made you whole. Go in peace and be healed of your disease. And I want to focus us right there in verses 33 and 34. But the woman, knowing what had happened to her, came in fear and trembling, fell down before him and told him the whole truth. He said to her daughter, your faith has made you well, go in peace and be healed of your disease. Let us pray. Eternal and everlasting God, we thank you for this day, a day that was not promised to us, but a day nevertheless that we get to experience your power. Oh God, we thank you that your power, your grace, and your mercy is worth fighting for. We thank you, oh God, that we are worth fighting for. And so we pray to God today, God, that the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart would be acceptable in your sight, for you are our strength and our redeemer. And we thank you, God, for all that you are and all that you do. Now, God, bless these, your people. Allow them to hear anew and afresh this familiar passage in a new way and bless them even more for seeing and being parts of your miracles, your miraculous work and knowing, oh God, that they are worth the fight and that there is so much worth fighting for. We pray all of this in the name of Jesus. Bless this ministry more abundantly and allow it to prosper and grow according to your will. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Again, the Gospel of Mark, the fifth chapter, we're focusing on 30, verses 33 and 34. And for a few moments, I just want to come from the thought, worth the fight, worth the fight. Beloved of God, March is Women's Month. And we are also beginning our fourth week of the Lenten season. As we just finished Black History from February, we still continue our, continue our celebration of the blessing in and of Black bodies. 
Women and their work are critical to understanding the work of our Savior and the purposes God has for God's people in the healing of women's bodies, the purposes that God has for God and God's people, for, for us as God's people. Women birth and nurture nations. Women bear in their bodies the burdens of their communities. Women work to make changes in their communities. Women love fierce, fiercely and fearlessly. Women fight, women hope. Women seek peace. Women deeply yearn for joy. Women also, though, are abused, mistreated, mishandled, and maimed. Women are rejected, accused, and avoided. Women are interrupted, passed over, and ignored. Women are not all the same. Women are God's creation, created in God's image. These bodies are worthy. There is blessing in their bodies, bodies we are told in Genesis that were created from a rib of Adam. With those bodies, God brought forth mighty warriors, priests, and prophets, both men and women. Through women's bodies, the Savior of the world was born. Women's bodies are not just a means to an end, despite the diminishing actions of some. Women are not limited to how their bodies benefit and create pleasure for others, only to be discarded. These bodies are worthy. Somebody say amen. Women's bodies are earthen vessels created to be filled with God's glory, God's grace, and God's mercy as all bodies are created. These bodies are holy and, yes, worthy, holy, divine, and full of power. We as women, as black women, brown women, or any other marginalized specifier are not Jezebels, whores, mammies, hoochies, or any other derogatory slur. We are God's masterpieces. Type in the chat, God, I am a masterpiece. We were not created as at the expense of men or other women, but we were created to be in mutual relationship with others and, na and nature and with our God. These bodies are worthy. This month, we continue to engage with God and one another to invade our understanding of the importance of women and to gain a new appreciation. If this bothers you, then we all must repent. That somehow and some way we don't have we that somehow in some way we have bought the lie that we don't have to value women. They are expendable and that there is somehow a question about their worth. That somehow women and their bodies are not as holy as men's bodies. That when women do things, it is somehow not as equal. Doesn't matter what these bodies do. Unfortunately, it seems we have accepted that these bodies are not worthy. As we consider the worth of women, we have to consider how we talk about ourselves, how we normalize certain behaviors and truths uh, that women believe about themselves. There are some ideas that call into question the worth of women. We must repent for continuing to accept these ideas. The church, help us Holy Ghost, the church, continues to harbor resentment against the majority of its members. Women's presence and abilities are required, but they are not always affirmed. We struggle in interpreting the worth of women just as we struggle to understand the worth of many persons who do not fit the normal we understand. Worth, beloved, is not derived from our understanding. Worth is not something we are supposed to be concerned with. Worth and value are characteristics associated with property. As we continue to struggle with this, we continue to struggle with a system that has us questioning, especially as black folk, whether or not we are still valuable after losing our slave status. We may be removed from the plantation, but the system still seeks to control us. This is the reason we consider what people can do instead of accepting them just as they are. While we set up rules to keep people out instead of bringing people in. Why, oh God, this woman for 12 years searched for answers and she grew worse as the, the systems and rules and policies and even the religious authorities put things in place to keep her down. On this fourth Sunday of Lent, 
We need to ask ourselves if we are willing to let go of these ideas. Can our minds be renewed in order to truly understand the plans that God has for us? In the Bible, we often take for granted the work of women's bodies, the miracles that happen in and through, and because unnamed and named women will not allow the limitations placed on them by the world to overcome the plans and promises that God offers. We take for granted the ways that women fight for their place, their access, their connection to God. Thus, they are not fighting just for the opportunity to have people understand their worth, but they're fighting for their souls, and that is a worthy fight. Or rather, it is worth the fight. These women go to great lengths at the risk of their own lives to go against the world to get to God. The extraordinary lengths are good, but even more, the fight they are in is a struggle of faith. The fight of faith. That in spite of what others say and do, in spite of how they are treated, in spite of the policies and culture that are impediments against them, they show us that not only are they worth the fight, but all of the hidden marginalized spaces they represent are worthy and worth the fight as well. In the church, we take for granted the amount of chicken and fish guts, flour, cornmeal, cabbage fragments, pot liquor, chitlin juice, calluses and blisters, scars from hot grease, knife cuts and baking burns that carried our churches into century plus old institutions. We don't truly appreciate the leadership, the praying, the preaching, the lessons, the education, the singing, the weeping, the praising, the shouting of women, the deep tradition and history of women, black women that fought their sp through their spiritual practices, who knew the weapons of their warfare were not carnal. But as 2 Corinthians 10 and 4 continues, these practices have divine power to destroy strongholds. We read about the unnamed women in the Bible and hear about the many women in our communities who came to church and were inspired to make a better world for everyone. And so they put their bodies in harm's way by marching, sitting, protesting, enduring jail cells, walking into schools where through the racist conflict and even chasing the vultures away from the desecrated bodies of their babies or letting the world see the horrific remains of their children as not to hide these acts of evil. They did all of this, beloved, because they knew there was something different about our Savior and that the kingdom of God was worth the fight. Something so true and deep and powerful, and this something was so critical to their survival, the survival of their children, the opportunity for them to truly be whole, to thrive in love and joy. All of this was worth pressing, persevering. It was and remains worth the fight. This power, this power that emanated from God. They were told was available to them and they believed it. And perhaps they even they could do what no one thought was possible. No one thought they were capable of. Destroy the very structure of empire, of institutions that desire nothing more than to kill, steal, and destroy. Either way, beloved, for them, it was worth a try and worth the fight. Today... Our sermon takes us to the Gospel of Mark, the fifth chapter, to a situation and circumstance that highlights the importance of women's interactions with God and the miracles they yield simply because they want to be whole. Somebody type right now in the chat, I want to be whole, and I'm willing or, or, or and just express or think about what you are willing to risk to get to God. Imagine that. Not being comfortable with the status quo, not accepting things as they are, not going with the flow, not being insecure, but believing that there is something greater, believing that you are worthy of God's love, believing that you can be whole, believing that you can be safe, believing that you can have peace. Many 
have offered an interpretation of the accounts that are involved in this passage of Mark. Like its synoptic cousins found in Matthew and Luke, this narrative of this unnamed woman wishes to offer us an intimate view of how, beloved, we can be very active in the process of a miracle. Miracles, beloved, involve divine action and human transformation. God reveals God's self through a powerful and awesome intervention that cannot be explained by us and whose experience will cause major transformation and acceptance. Is there anybody out there that needs transformation? Is there anybody out there that is desirous of acceptance? This is not the kind of acceptance that I'm talking about. I'm not talking about the acceptance that is driven by what you need and your insecurities. I'm talking about the acceptance that comes when you know beyond a shadow of a doubt that throughout your relationship with God, it is the acceptance of God's promises. It is the acceptance of God's love. It is the acceptance that you are worthy and holy, made by God, that God looked upon you and tells you that you are good. That's the acceptance I'm talking about. It is sometimes, beloved, hard to find people who still believe in miracles. There is more than enough skepticism, anger, frustration, depression, rage, worry, and doubt to go around the world too many times. COVID-19 politics and even our perceptions would have us believing that we must settle for disaster, that somehow we should just give up. Ah, we are not doomed, beloved. Although it seems so, when politicians who are paid well would seek to delay and deny the improvement of life for millions, it would seem like we are doomed and fated to disaster. When we witness the gross indifference, the gross difference in treatment between those who fought for black lives this past last summer and those who participated in a violent insurrection at the Capitol, it is not crazy to think that we are doomed and headed for disaster. When we hear that some are using COVID vaccines as campaign fundraising schemes, it is certain that we are doomed and headed for disaster. Much like our current circumstances, the context of the Gospel of Mark doesn't sugarcoat these scenes. This narrative, this story of this unnamed woman pushes us to ask, what are we willing to do? How far are we willing to go? How much will we endure to be whole? Beloved, that is an important question to ask during this season of Lent. In our seeking out of Jesus, as we watch Jesus go to travel on to Calvary, as we watch Jesus be tested and tried in the wilderness, as we experience all of that, are we willing to push past all all of the things that come to harm us and what we perceive as necessary to practice, to pray, to center ourselves, to get as close to God as we can. Do we truly believe we are worthy or rather the promises of God are worth the fight? This story of this unnamed woman who for 12 years has experienced this problem seeks to interrupt the way we experience not only the world, but also how we see ourselves and even more how we experience God. The Mark and Gospel does not sugarcoat the message of Christ's ministry. It offers a quick and dirty explanation of the precision of Jesus' words and actions in announcing the salvation and life offered through allegiance to God's kingdom. Mark's gospel is for folks who need to see Jesus move and interact with the natural and spiritual word and bring it into submission to the will of his father. And that's exactly what happens here. He starts in in chapter five. He starts off in Gentile territory, in the prison camps at the border. I mean, in the neglected neighborhoods ravaged by lack of funding and despair. I mean, in the dead places and spaces of the garrison to relieve a man of legion, an army of demons. Here in chapter chapter five, this is where our particular passage picks up, where we find the healing of two women. One with 12 years of issues and one with only 12 years of life. 
One whose life had suddenly been taken and, one who, and who, who had her father to intercede for her. And one who for 12 young, long years felt life slowly and miserably flow from her body. Both women were drained. Jairus' daughter, who was just at the beginning of her life, 12 years young, reaching the age of maturity where she would still be confined by the choices and decisions of her father, and a woman who for 12 years had life slowly leaking from her body, both identified by their issues and the ways in which the men around them would determine their fate. Both women, young and old, representing the totality of women that desire to not be bound by our issues or what others say about us, uh, to be whole and holy because that's how God made us. For 12 years, this woman looked for answers. She went to doctors, asked for prayers, looked for home remedies, and nothing. Still, she didn't give up. Even when she got worse, she didn't give up. The story of this woman is not so different than the women we knew growing up. The women whose names we actually know. The women who were sick and went to doctor's offices for attention to their pain and illnesses. Only to find that these doctors would not treat them or could not actually address their needs because of their unwillingness to treat them. To get to the root of their ailments. Women who were victims to policies that determine what should happen to their bodies without truly bringing healing. Women who were deprived of the dignity of voting. We talk about them, but they are a part of us. We may not know the names of these biblical women, but we do know the names of women who have endured tragedy, whose trauma became motivation to ensure we live better lives. We must celebrate them. We must call the names of those who are victims of systems, but we also call the names of those who stood against and persevered against the system. We cry out and celebrate the countless slave women and women like Henrietta Lacks, whose bodies were unknowingly and often forcibly used in experimentation so that we can have the current improvements in healthcare today. Thank those women for the COVID-19 vaccine. We cry out and celebrate the countless women who fought for the right for women to vote. Women who were part of the suffragette moment, movement, but also women who held other women accountable for passing on the same discrimination offered from men. Women like Dorothy Height, Anna Julia Cooper, Ida B. Wells, Sojourner Truth, all of these who paved the way for Diane Nash, Fetty Lou Hamer, Shirley Chisholm, women who believed that through their work, it would bring about the work of Tamika Atkins, Helen Butler, Deborah Scott, and of course, Stacey Abrams. Even more, they knew that through their perseverance, anything is possible, even a vice president. Like the woman with the dis disease for 12 years, they were unwilling to give up and be a victim. They exhausted all of their efforts and they went after their healing. Is there anybody who's willing to go after their healing? These women believed that they had faith. You remember faith? The substance of things hoped for. The evidence of things not seen. The belief that you can be healed. You will be healed. The confidence that your situation will change. The reliance on a greater understanding. A greater power that will uplift you in the face of every and any adversity. Black women have relied on this faith in spite of the double agenda against them the racism and sexism that follows them in their homes, on their jobs, follows their children, and even invades the sanctuary of Sunday morning. Well, no more. The Gospel of Mark allows us to see the miracles performed by Jesus, but also the miracles this woman receives because she is willing to believe that there is more and it's worth the fight. St. James, how long have you been on the battlefield for God? How long have you been fighting for the survival of your church and your community? Who were the women who taught and nurtured you in Sunday school, in YPD? Call the roll 
full of women who you knew had the call on their lives to preach the gospel, but were not allowed to because of the questions of their ability. Talk about the women who served, who scolded children, who defied the odds, who pressed Jesus for their healing, who pressed his father for change. Celebrate those women who taught you how to pray fast, praise, so that you would know there is a God that is greater than your issues and can provide a miracle if you are willing to only believe and fight. You call your own role. And remember, start typing the names there in the chat so that when you look back next year uh, and you look back on the memories that Facebook and Instagram will post, uh, will pop up for you. You will remember that you put these names into the history and into perpetuity. Remember that it was their faith that allowed us to begin to understand what is required for relationship with God. And that's Worth the fight. Jesus is looking for a few good women who are willing to reach out and risk connection for the sake of growing beyond the pain and misfortune of their past to, or even their current situations. It is risky business serving God, believing in God, but it is worth the fight. There is a greater risk, though, in not believing in God. God never promised that everything would be perfect, but God did promise to be with us. We have the opportunity to touch this God and receive power. This power is freely given, even though we may choose to use unconventional means to come to this God. And when we do, when we desire God more than respectability, when we understand the words of the hymn, my faith looks up to thee, thou lamb of Calvary, Savior divine. Now hear me. While I pray, take all my sins away. Oh, let me from this day be wholly thine. When we can cry out to God and believe that all things are possible for our communities and for ourselves, then we will experience God's miraculous and transforming power in our lives. She risked it all and was able was to be healed. Jesus paid it all and fought on our behalf. Because we were worth the fight. The question remains, what are we willing to do? What are we willing to risk? What are we willing to sacrifice? So that we can come into the fullness of our being and be who God has called us to be. That we can move past our issues, be whole, and be with our God. Is it worth the fight to you, St. James? That is the question I pose to you and I offer you as we close today. It is relationship with God, relationship with each other, relationship and safety is worth the fight. Amen. My sisters and my brothers, you have heard the word today preached by the Reverend Tabitha Sanko. And if you are here watching with us today and you have never given yourself to Jesus, you need to know that Jesus wants a relationship with you. So if you have never given your life to Christ, then you need to ask Jesus to come into your heart and let us know in the chat after you've done that and go to our website, stjamesamychicago.com slash virtual church and fill out the salvation form so that we can reach out to you on this faith journey. And if you do not have a church home or if you have fallen away from having a church home, we invite you to become a member of St. James AME Chicago. We would love for you to be part of our family. We would invite you to also let us know in the chat or go to our website, stjamesamychicago.com slash virtual church. And you can fill out the membership form so that we can reach out to you and walk alongside with you. We pray that God will bless you. We pray that God will keep you. And we pray that you will remember that you belong to God. Amen. Good morning. It is now giving time in our virtual space. There are three ways that you can give here at St. James. First is by logging on to stjamesandmechicago.com and give using PayPal or Givelify. 
You can also mail your tithes and offerings to St. James AME, 9256 South Lafayette, Chicago, Illinois, 60620. Thank you for your generosity and we will continue to give God the glory as we use all of our gifts to glorify God. Let us pray. Oh gracious God, we thank you for the tithes and the offerings that are prepared here for your service, Lord God. We thank you for those that are able to give and those that are not. Lord God, we ask that you bless those hands, Lord God, that as we continue to give in this um, time and this season, Lord God, that people will give not grudgingly, Lord God, but with their whole hearts. So we thank you for the offering that is going forth today, Lord God, may it build your kingdom, may it build the households of faith, Lord God, may it build the households that are um, in this virtual space today. And we give you all the glory and honor. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Praise be to God for our preacher this morning, Reverend Tabitha Sanko. I know we, you all, I was blessed by the word of God today. And I just want to thank everyone for joining us on this Sunday. And if you heard the word and you would like to give your life to Christ, or if you would like to join St. James Amy Chicago, you can go to our website at stjamesamychicago.com slash virtual church. And we will love to connect with you. And we encourage you to continue to join us every Sunday on Facebook, YouTube, and on our website at 1030 a.m. Central Standard Time. And now for the benediction. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord's face shine upon you and be gracious to you. And may the Lord turn his face towards you and give you peace. Hence now and forevermore, and let us all say, Amen. Go in peace to love and to serve the Lord.